Welcome or welcome back at C-Score. In this video clip, we're going to talk about continuity. And you see the first statement here. A function f of x is continuous at x equals c if there is no interruption in the graph of f of x at x equals c. So what you see here, in fact, is a function that is not continuous at x equals c because there is an interruption here. There is a hole. This is a second example where we see a hole, an interruption here. What is the difference between this picture and the first one? The value of the function at c here does exist, since on the first one we do not have a value of the function f at c. And the last picture that shows us another function that is not continuous at x equals c, it shows us a jump, like we call. And now let's see the condition we need to have in order for a function to be continuous at x equals c. We have to have the function define at x equals c. So for example, here on the first picture, like I said, f of c does not exist. Because it's a hole. On the second picture, f of c does exist is this point here. However, the limit at x, well, limit when x approach to c, I'm, I'm sorry, of f of x is different than the value of the function at c. The limit will be a total different value than the value of the function at c. So that's the reason the function is not continuous. And in the last picture you see here, even though f of c exists, the limit now does not exist. Limit when x approach to c of f of x does not exist. Why not? Because if you notice, if I go close to c from the left side, this is the value I'm getting close at. If I come from the right side, this is the value I'm going to go close to. These two are different, so the limit does not exist. So these are the three, uh, three situations where the function is not continuous at C. Uh, I mentioned about x approaching from left side and the right side. This is the meaning of these two limits. So this one says x approach from the left side. You notice that C minus. And this one says approaching from the right side. You notice if these two limits are the same, the limit does exist and is the same value like uh, for the one coming from the left or the right side. My next statement is talking about a function is continuous on an open interval if it's continuous and at each point in that interval. And the next thing is about close interval. Function is continuous on the close interval if it's continuous on the open interval and the limit when x approach to a plus. So from the right side of f of x equals f of a and limit when x approach to b minus from the left side of b of f of x is f of b. The picture, I think, will help us to see what I said here. And you notice once I approach a from the left side, I get closer to this f of a. And the same story about b, when I go closer to b from the left side, I'll go closer to f of b. Continuous function have some property. One of them is this first one, which says you can multiply by a number a continuous function. You get a continuous function at x equals c. The number can be any real number. That's what it says here. The second statement tells you if you have two continuous function at x equals c, the sum or the difference of those two functions is going to be continuous at x equals c. The third statement says something very similar. The only difference, we have a product. If we have two continuous function at c, the product is a function that is continuous at c. And the last one is talking about the quotient. If a 
the two functions are continuous at x equals c and g of c is different than zero. You need to be careful of that. Then the quotient of those two functions is a continuous function. And the last part of the clip is going to be the about the IVT, how it's called, intermediate value theorem, where we have a continuous function if f of x is continuous on a closed interval a, b, and k is a number between f of a and f of b, then there is at least one number c on the closed interval a, b, such that f of c equals k. So the picture, I think, will help us to understand what this theorem says. You notice f of x is a continuous function. And k is between f of a and f of b. There is, should be at least one c. In this case, we have three c's for which f of c is equals k. On the next picture, you can see an example of a function that where we cannot use IVT because the function is not continuous. So we see a gap here and you see even though k is between f of a and f of b there is no c such that f of c equals k so it's very important f of x needs to be continuous one of the reason we use this ivt is for finding zeros of function and i have this example where we have to use ivt to show that f of x equals x squared plus x minus one he uh, has a zero on the interval zero one so the first thing you're gonna do plug zero in and if you do f of zero you're gonna get negative one then you plug x equals one and f of one is one so you notice here uh, we have a negative number in this case negative one and a positive so therefore Somewhere between, we have to have a zero of this function. There should be a c such that the function will be zero. Why? Because this function f of x is continuous. Very important. The function needs to be continuous. So there is one c, and uh, IVT doesn't tell you how to find it. You have to find an algebraic way or a numerical way. In this case, I'll uh, you see the graph here and as I said, there is a moment here where the function is zero. How you find it? In this case, you can use a graphing calculator and uh, find that using the menu and the graphing calculator. If you enjoy this video clip, don't forget to click the like button and come back on C-square for more help. Thank you.